Hello everyone, welcome to UMD Media. UMD Media works on understanding, measuring, and doing. And it strives to contribute to an evidence-led, evidence-rich discourse and decision-making in the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia. Welcome to today's show. Uh, I have a special guest today, and uh, we are live on Facebook and YouTube. Please uh, share, subscribe, like, so that uh, many can access uh, our channel, our programs, our shows. So today uh, it's a great pleasure to have Asaf Abai from Texas. And Asaf Abai is uh, a board member of Tagaru Disaster Relief Fund. And we'll be talking about uh, what Tagaru Disaster Relief Fund does, when it was established, why, and so on. And as well as we'll, um, uh, announce their upcoming event that's coming in uh, 10 days or so. Uh, so, Asafa, welcome to UMD Media Show. Thanks so much, Getacho. Thank you for having me. Appreciate the opportunity. Awesome. So uh, let's talk about uh, you a bit and uh, more on uh, about the TDRF, uh, otherwise TDR Fund, as it's called. So. First, Asafa Bai. For those who want to follow Asafa, uh, you can find him on LinkedIn. Asafa Bai, you can see the link at the bottom. Uh, in case he changes his uh, profile picture, all that. So you will find the URL address there. And before I introduce his other social media tags, maybe I need to ask him something. What is this? What are we seeing here? Ah, that's that's uh, that looks like Ukro uh, I believe. So, okay, good. So yeah. this is good. Good Bahari archaeological site. Uh, you, you maybe you know take the opportunity to introduce to us. There are a number of uh, things here: Wokoro Cherkos, uh, Lodge, all that. So, because the reason um, I'm showing this, uh, our audience will uh, discover why we are doing this. But can you speak to what Good Bahari, all these uh, sites, Wokoro Cherkos, and Wora? Um. Well, Gudbahari is uh, essentially a name of uh, the river uh, that crosses pretty much the town of Ugro, Ugro uh, Hultaulalo. I believe there are two Ugros in Tigray, um, the other being Ugro Marai. So we're talking about Ugro Hultaulalo, and it's situated uh, uh, north of the town uh, when you head out to Adigrat. Uh, it's also close to close proximity to the Rakuan church uh, called uh, actually one of the earliest visited uh, foreign visited uh, uh, Rakuan church in the country, I believe, because of its proximity to the to, to the, the main road, the road access. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, there are uh, there are some background information about why it was called Good Bahari. Uh, I believe one of one of the the stories I heard uh, was it's because due to the Yodit Gadit uh, attack 
on Tigray archaeological sites, especially where the main targets, the church were the main targets. So all the things that were not able that she was not able, her troops were not able to burn, were thrown into the riverbed. So for that reason, um, the locals would would start calling good Zahazel Bahri, with to mean there's so much unknown and mystery uh, within this river. Um, so that's that's what I know. Uh, well, yeah. But of course, there are some lodges that that were recently built, and it's a nice place to visit. Uh, uh, from that area, you can pretty much access the majority of the Rocky One Church uh, in Tigray as well. There is Gara Alta to the uh, to the southeast. I mean southwest. There is uh, Mikel Emba, Mikel Korkor, you know all the the Azvedara area. Uh, Rocky One Church as well. Mm, great. Yeah, so... Um, and not to uh, mention, there is Najash, Al Najashi, 10, 10 kilometers uh, north of this river as well. So it's very uh, historical area. Exactly. Uh, was like you mentioned, it's one of the Rocky One Church. Uh, you can find, uh, I think, more than maybe 250 such churches uh in Tugray, one of them that you see at the bottom here so we're not going to talk about good bahari or Woro uh, more than this uh, but the reason i uh, brought out this good bahari is uh asafa buys social media handle uh is good bahari so this is his twitter account at good bahari uh, that's uh, his uh, twitter handle you can follow him there and maybe explore more about Oro, about Good Bahari, about uh, Oro Jorkos, all that. The same with um, his Facebook. Actually, his Facebook handle is uh, different. Uh, you can see it at the bottom here, but you can see the name uh, the same as Good Bahari as well. So let's talk about uh, TDRF. So uh, before we go to that, maybe uh, I think. It's good to explain what this logo represents. This is a logo of uh, Tagaru Disaster Relief Fund. Can you speak to that logo? Sure. If, if you focus on the negative space where the dark lines are, it shows a human uh, uh, stretching the, their hand um, sideways. Um, that is that speaks to the very purpose why we are organized it's human centric uh, we are trying to support uh, human beings uh, alleviate their pain and suffering um, it also shows uh, leaves you know two, two leaves uh, a stem of a flower pretty much which shows uh, the positive aspect of uh, of you know life in general which is development um, behind every pain there is there is something to look for uh, at the end so this is what i can um, tell you from from what i see in front of me okay great so uh maybe the tagaru disaster relief fund is not the only uh, not for profit uh, related to relief to uh, helping assisting the people the poor the needy all that uh so um Maybe you can speak to when it was established, why was it necessary to establish uh, this? While, for example, uh, as you know, the, uh, for a long time, TDA, the Tigray Development Association, Rust, all that uh, have been active. So what, what did you guys see uh, in terms of uh, closing a gap or maybe expanding on this opportunity what, what would the motive behind establishing tdrf um, be, um i think a little background first uh, uh the the time when we set up this organization uh as uh, pretty much every tigrawai or tigrawai would know would remember uh during the emergence of this reformist government in ethiopia there were ethnic based uh attacks especially on targeting uh tigrayan civilians in outside tigray so uh 
so much was not really uh, spoken about the pain and suffering of primarily um, from the state of Oromia uh, and Amhara regions. Um, we saw there, there was a lot of pain being you know, posted on social media that nothing was being done. So that was something, uh, I guess, a burning, there was a burning desire in every uh, Tigrawai or Tigrawai team. Uh, but there was no leadership to come forward and you know say, hey, this is ways we can help. So we saw that as an opportunity. There, there's something missing here, um, but it has nothing to do with uh, TDA not being you know being active or rest. Um, if anything, there's so much to be proud of uh, about TDA and rest, uh, and we can only be inspired by what they have done so far. Um, at the same time, um, during that time, there was a lot of political discourse in our community. And um, as you can imagine, TDA uh, or REST could have been uh, more likely be associated with a certain uh, 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 political party. Um, so for that reason, um, we thought maybe we could be a, a platform that is encompassing of all uh, the Tagaru so that we can uh, help our people. Uh, that's the main reason. Uh, plus, it, it's in our core belief that uh, the problems Tigrayans are facing uh, at this moment are multifaceted. They're, they're varied in nature. So it only uh, requires us to even create more and more organization, mission-led organizations that can focus in different areas. And then maybe collaborate our rules. So uh, this is not to suggest that, for example, we started uh, helping and providing immediate relief to uh, IDPs first. It's because that was the, the issue that, that was time critical. But that doesn't mean we were the experts to do it. There are so many experts that we can really work with, uh, help us see uh, where we can make a bigger impact. So if I, if you allow me to take an example, in the US, there are 1.6 million organizations, nonprofit organizations. So if you divide that by the population of the United States, uh, that would be for every 200 people, there is one nonprofit. So, just having one NGO doesn't mean like that's the, you know, um, it speaks how how advanced the society is or it speaks to, uh, to uh, how involved the citizens are in the social issues that everybody faces in this country. Because essentially, these organizations are not created for the purpose of creating money or for uh, uh, personal reasons. They are uh, led by mission, by a desire you have as a person to to help your own human beings, your your human peers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I think we should encourage. Uh, I'm actually encouraged to see many organizations. I could see in the activity activism area, uh, Omna Archive Twenty dot com. I mean dot org, Archive to Grab, I believe. Uh, I stand with Tigray, so many others. Yes. And there are also organizations in every community, uh, uh, in cities that we have in the United States or Canada, everywhere else where there are Tagal. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's great. I mean, um, so the need is great. So the uh, response should be also uh, that way. And diversity always comes with uh, some beauty, some uh, uh, different ways of creative, innovative way. And uh, so uh, we, we will never be too much of organizations. Uh, we will actually be short of uh, meeting the needs that are great. So uh, no yes, doubt sir. about that. So uh, let's talk about your vision, mission. Uh, so uh, you can speak to that, to our audience who never maybe have heard of what TDRF is about. So like I mentioned earlier, it existed. I mean, uh, it came to... Um, 
um, to a point where we saw there were problems with IDPs. Uh, before the onset of the war, we had, Tigray had 149 uh, temporary shelters. These are people outside who had relatives to go to. These are people that were uprooted from places where they have lived for very long, at least for one generation. Some of them don't even speak to Grenya. So uh, that was the main reason why we started the very first campaign. But later we learned, um, we noticed this pattern where every, whenever disaster occurs in Tigray, you could call it ambeta, you could call it drought, you could call it ethnic conflict like this one, or war, or genocide now at a bigger scale. We always react, like we we, we are like reactive instead of being uh, proactive, being prepared ahead of time. For example, drought happens like uh, very uh, routinely, and we are very drought prone population, but you don't see and much done to really resolve uh, uh, this is not to discredit uh, organizations like rest and other uh, even the government but it's not enough so we thought there is enough resources for integrai even outside uh, the Tigrayan elite people that have really vast knowledge on um, could be sustainable development uh, agriculture in the field of health sciences, education, and so forth. Why not set up this uh, organization where all this resource can be mobilized and maybe become the next TDA or the next rest? Why not? That's that's the the, the reason why we uh, organized the, the TDRF. With that point, uh, so you you repeatedly say we, and uh, we know that you are a board member. Uh, actually, you are the former president. Uh, so there is a transition the, that happened as well. Yes. Uh, so there is a team behind uh, GDRF. So you can speak to that as well uh, while I show this. So uh, how is the organizational structure? How, how do you work? So... Um... Like I said in the beginning, you know, it was uh, more of a desire. You know, we came up a group of uh, Tigrayan professionals came together. Hey, let's 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 react. Let's let's do something about this issue at hand. And then it came to a point where we had to organize it uh, formally, uh, so we could be legal. So um, then we served for about two years. Uh, we had campaigns in in within that two years period of time that we may be uh, explained later. Um, then it came to a point based on the bylaws every uh, two years, uh, a, new, a new leadership has to be uh, elected or appointed. So for, those, uh, for that reason, we have now from uh, 11 people in the beginning, uh, we are now uh, 15 strong, uh, uh, board members. So it's led by a, an executive team. I mean, the majority of the the, the strategic uh, planning and thinking and formulating uh, pretty much to where we are headed as an organization uh, is pretty much done by the executive team and the board member, uh, the board members uh, pretty much oversight that that leadership team. Okay, uh, I like the composition. Uh, so in the executive team, I see uh, majority women, I guess. Yeah, that's that's the interesting fact. Yeah, um, that's great. I am, I am really uh, uh, proud of us, you know, to where we are. I'm very, very positive that TDRF will, will, will be a very impactful uh, organization, especially right now we have the capacity that we we didn't have before um, uh, to really penetrate in the areas where we can be most impactful. 
Mm. So maybe the board should uh, increase by one uh, to make it at least 50 50. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's jump into uh, your work. So you have been talking about, uh, you know, slightly about uh, your work, but can you speak to the different themes, areas, topics, aspects, activities that you do? Yeah. So this, these goal areas uh, you see in front of you are based on the UN Sustainable Development Goals that was adopted in 2015. Out of the 17 goals, uh, the top ones are ending poverty, maybe respecting the planet, right? So in Tigray, we looked at, you know, uh, the very source of pretty much source of our problems is poverty. So uh, based on that, we have this four or five areas where we can focus. And uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, uh, it doesn't mean that we have all the expertise in the team, but we plan to have uh, sub teams, committees that can help us, um, uh, you know, work and bring greater impact on the society that we serve. So food security is one of them, uh, which is tied to agriculture. And we can, we can only work, maybe uh, help, you know, as you know, our our society, 80% of the population lives on subsistence agriculture and maybe jump starting that, uh, uh, that agriculture sector would probably unlock uh, the potential we have as a, um, another one is economic well-being, which is also, uh, which relates to food security, but there are times where uh, cash based incentive really can uh, help empower people that are very in a very dire situation, just like what we did uh, with the IDP project we did in 2019. Disaster relief, of course, uh, as it says it, uh, situations like the current situation we are in, uh, so many people are, millions are in a, in a very uh, family-like situation. Uh, the health sector has been, uh, destroyed pretty, pretty much. Uh, uh, similar education. Education is very critical, especially for people who are already, uh, their economic well-being is uh, uh, not so good. Uh, they, they don't have any, any sufficient food to eat. Uh, if there are disasters stricken, uh, education would not be considered something of uh, a right it's more than that uh, it can protect them from especially children can protect them from uh, uh, explo physical exploitation uh, even the girls from uh, 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 things that you know sa safety is another issue as well when when you have idps and especially the most vulnerable populations. There could be kids that are separated from their parents. There could be uh, underage girls. And imagine if they get uh, uh, pregnant in the process or they could be sold for uh, sex labor or anything. So uh, having a place where they can have uh, like building schools near to this uh, could be temporary shelters or places where uh, these this uh, problems exist is very essential in protecting their life as well. Mm. Uh, great. So uh, for that, uh, because you you have been active since two thousand eighteen, and there are uh, uh, yeah, in your website. I saw uh, you put numbers in terms of the impact so far since 2018. Uh, maybe you can uh, touch on that as well. Uh, I will show it on the screen. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Definitely. So 2018 was, we started around October timeline. Uh, so the, the setup of the organization, the legal works took about a few, a couple of months but we we started a, a GoFundMe account uh, uh, and a social um, media campaign 
And one of the challenges, if I can include the challenge, was to even, uh, you know, material, to collect material. Uh, very little was known about, you know, the suffering of the people. There were essentially none. There were a couple of interviews, but other than that, well, there wasn't there. So I think uh, beyond the, the cash amount that you see, uh, most of the work we did, we thought we did uh, well was the the awareness we created that this problem even existed in 2018. Uh, uh, I know for people who are very uh, connected to the media and they know you know what's going on, they may be aware, but general public did not even know um, the scale of the problem. So we worked so hard to collect data. We even sent uh, uh, our, our, our volunteers to visit this uh, uh, temporary shelter so they can interview uh, some of the, the victims. Uh, and that helped us learn, you know, how 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 deep the pain and suffering is, the the mental and physical injuries they they sustained. Um, so, cash wise, we collected about two hundred ten thousand dollars, which uh, we properly um, uh, distributed to the victims. The victims were selected by the regional uh, agency. It's called Bureau of Labor and Social Affairs. So the government knows they have the data about their their uh, the beneficiaries. So they had they they selected based on um, you know the por proportionate need of the, the, the beneficiaries. Um, I don't have the data in front of me, but it can be maybe uh, that's something people can find on our uh, Facebook uh, page. Uh, there is a scale, you know, first they rank them in terms of priority. So uh, based on the need uh, the families have. So we paid them based on that. And the next uh, project is uh, uh, during the Tigray Relief. Uh, we call it the Tigray Relief uh, uh, project. So during the invasion of Tigray, um, as you can imagine, it was hard to really, uh, there was no connection. There was no way of uh, interacti interacting with our uh, grass grassroots le uh, level uh, uh, partners. But we made, uh, we collected, we worked with the Houston uh, community, uh, with the Houston to guide community, and they contributed uh, almost uh, Ninety thousand dollars, and that ninety thousand uh, dollar, eighty thousand of it was routed uh, to Tigray, and we immediately uh, made the transaction with the factory that uh, produces the wheat flour. And uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Mulu Charity Acts Coordination Center and OSSHD. To Gry, which is managed by uh, uh, Brother uh, Yurga. And of course, Mulu is managed by Mulu. On the previous project, I want to also thank uh, Karadin Elders Association. Uh, those are the people who really managed uh, the distribution of the funds. Uh, that was a cash-based uh, intervention for the, for the IDPs. The next one was uh, we sent five thousand dollars to to Sudan uh, for basic, you know, for the purpose of buying basic supplies to uh, people that were displaced as a result of the war. Uh, we also raised about ten grand during the three-day uh, prayer uh, period. That was, uh, I think, that was declared on. Uh, I remember about June, June time frame. So this is this is a high level. This is the impact uh, uh, we've made so far as an organization. Great. So the the source and the fuel, the engine 
everything of this is fundraising, right? So uh, you are mentioning about what you have used that for so far, and you are actively as well uh, fundraising. Among other things, um, you also look for grants, uh, advocacy, all that. Maybe um, our audience would be interested in that as well. So if you can speak to your initiatives. Initiatives. So um, as as TDRF, uh, so, social media or fundraising campaigns are as one source of uh, income for us. Uh, it, it is primarily done through uh, uh, social media uh, campaigns, but also we also work with community organizations. We've worked uh, uh, during, especially during the two beginning campaigns through community centers, Tigray community centers. Those are the engine of our, what we are, you know, for, for everything we do at uh, TDRF. Uh, we worked even with uh, TDA, we worked with Aulalo Schools uh, Alumni Association, we worked with uh, um, the Dallas community, the Grand community, the Dallas to Grand Alliance community. We worked with Houston. This is the second time we're working with Houston community. Um, uh, the DMV area, big supporter, big ups for them, the DMV Tagaros. We worked with uh, uh, the Boston community, to guy community. We have we have also sent emails, you know, uh, formal emails and communications to all the community centers and organizations uh, when we started the first campaign. So that helps us, you know, fuel some of that money. Half, almost half of it came straight from uh, this individual organizations. They raised, they come, they managed their own campaigns and they deposited the money to our account so we could uh, facilitate the distribution of the fund. Uh, grants is one uh, that we are looking into currently. Uh, uh, it's both ways. We, we are trying to look for grants ourselves, but at the same time, if we have the cash, we also look for other initiatives, especially in Tigray. Tigray focused initiatives that are ongoing that could interest us. If, if it fits into the strategic goals that we have as an organization, uh, we plan to, we intend to uh, fund them. Social media advocacy, like I said in the beginning, um, some problems that we have in Tigray, really, um, they're not known to the world. So um, our job here is to make sure that 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 knowledge base is available to everybody. So uh, everybody knows uh, the well-being of the welfare of our people and the challenges. Knowledge Hub, um, we, through the, throughout this process, we, we've had challenges. We've had uh, things that we have learned as an organization. We also have capable people um, that have acquired experience uh so we thought we could we could actually help other nonprofit organizations um to go to garden nonprofits by provi by providing knowledge of any uh, tools that are available that may they may exploit so they can be successful Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. One thing that, uh, you know, when it comes to fundraising and uh, uh, dispensing that to the needy, to those who are in need, uh, people ask about transparency. So how do, how do you uh, work in terms of TDRF, uh, uh, in terms of what you're mentioning, what you're showing in the numbers there? Do you have a mechanism of, um, you know, closing the loop in terms of feedback? To those who, um, you know, helped you raise the fund or in the giving, all that, because we'll be talking about what the giving Tuesday that's coming up. So, how how do you deal with the issue of transparency? How do you work with that? Yeah, 
we we understand transparency is one uh, point that we we have to look we have to be mindful about. So every donor uh, has the you know the right to know where their money is uh, being spent, how it's being spent. Um, so we try to publish. Uh, uh, Let letters, press release letters to update our donors. Um, uh, for the most part, it has been the pay, the Facebook page and the Govern Me campaign that we had, where we we publish our information. At the same time, we used the IGA uh, forum, I believe. And when we get a chance, also we come out live and speak about what we have done so far, the challenges we face as an organization. I mean, it's not clear cut. There were times, uh, gonna be honest, there were times where we uh, probably have lacked to provide information because uh, it, it was moving very slowly because um, uh, the things that were happening back home were somewhat out of our control. So we had to really wait for the, for the agency to provide us the list So we were not moving uh, for the most part of uh, 2019, I believe. Uh, but we ended up uh, uh, making sure the money went directly to the beneficiaries. I think that's what one thing maybe people can can be proud of is from this organization is uh, usually what happens is um, the experience of people, even myself, is we we send money, and then what we get is a receipt but we don't really see the impact it had on the people that we we sought to help. So we wanted to change that narrative. We, we're trying to make sure that doesn't happen with TDRF. If your money comes into TDRF, we got to make sure we inform you where that money was spent. So, so the website you see is an effort to be more transparent. Um, Also, even this this media interview, I mean, the conversation we are having is one of the reasons uh, uh, we, we are doing, so to, to make sure. And also, if there is a company called GuideStar, it, it labels organizations based on how transparent they are, how effective they are in terms of uh, updating their, their, their uh, donors. If you can see out there, we are silver labeled. Uh, As young as we are, uh, to have that kind of uh, um, uh, label is, is uh, I think, uh, is telling. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, I think that that's a, an important aspect in terms of uh, you also have uh, a social media presence. So anyone who wonders about uh, whatever activities you are working on, uh, to, uh, where the money is spent or how they can help, Uh, you know, support you, you your social uh, media presence uh, website is uh, clear there. So uh, consistently through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, you can see that TDR fund is the handle. Uh, these are the screenshots. This is the Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash TDR fund. Uh, you can see uh, this is the Instagram the same instagram.com slash tdr fund uh, i think i jumped the uh, let me see if i can get the twitter this is a website tdrfund.org so you have uh, opportunities to donate as well as to contact i had the twitter but uh, i think it's not there but it's the same tdr fund in the website so maybe le let's play on uh, your uh, promo video on uh, uh, the upcoming uh, event and you can speak to that and maybe i will also get your final uh, word on uh, uh, the show today <laughs> important day coming up. It's November 30th. It's a Tuesday, the day after Cyber Monday. But it's not just any day. It's Giving Tuesday. 
Giving Tuesday is a global day of giving that's grown into a movement uniting people around the world. It's simple. After you get and get, you get a chance to give in any way you want. Find something you care about, give, and then tell people about it. Sharing why you give will inspire others. We hope that you will give to the Tagaro Disaster Relief Fund. Give to women, give to children, give to families. Give to refugees in Sudan, give to displaced persons in Tigray. It doesn't matter where you live or how much you give, little actions can make a big impact. So find a way to give back this Giving Tuesday. Give for Tigray. Thank you. Yeah, it was great uh, to have you, but uh, you in final word, and uh, if you want to uh, speak to that art on the upcoming event and anything you want, uh, it's yours. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank to to those who really trusted us. Uh, especially in the beginning days, um, they trusted us with their money, with their desire, with what they see, um, pretty much to do the work. So we appreciate those. If they didn't support us, if we didn't get their support, we wouldn't be here. This TDRF is one step ahead right now uh, as an organization. Hopefully in the near future, we are making uh, uh like an impact for, on generations. Uh, as you know, organizations uh, start out of uh, some inner inner desire, purpose to, to do something good for the welfare of the people or, or society. And that common feeling that we, we have as Tagaro uh, keeps fueling that, that organization. So, even if the current uh, executive team or board of directors leave, as long as there are people of uh, generations of Tigrayans that really want to do something good for Tigray, they will keep feeling, they will keep pushing TDRF to the next level uh, and make it last uh, for generations. So what I want to say to everybody is get involved. Uh, it could be TDRF. Your interest could be in women's health. Your interest could be in uh, uh, child welfare. Your interest could be in, in the rec victims of Tigray. Your interest could be in justice. Uh, your interest could be in anywhere. It could be in religion. It could be in rehabilitating uh, the, the rivers, for example, uh, which Good Bahari I have really a huge inclination about because I grew up uh, swimming there. Uh, I don't want to see it dry right now. So, if if I have if I get a chance, I would work on rehabilitating Gudbahari uh, as a river because it's more than a river for me. It, it's a place where I used to go after school, and just it was a Zen time for me. It was something that I really uh, almost a nat nat natural exposure for me. So I'm sure you have something to offer everybody. Every person has a potential to do something good. So especially at this time, all that potential needs to be mobilized. We need to participate in all of these organizations, whether it's TD, TDA, TDRF, Omna Tigray, I Stand With Tigray, uh, other organizations that, that are betting uh, because of this. Let's, let's participate. That's what I want to say. And about Giving Tuesday, uh, you saw it in the video. It's self-explanatory. Um, it's intended to really energize uh, uh, the people of, especially people in Tigray, I mean, uh, uh, in the diaspora, to learn uh, to give. I don't think our culture has a problem of uh, not giving, uh, but uh, it needs to be a habit. Like I mentioned earlier, um, 1.6 uh, 
organizations exist in the U.S. for the sole purpose of uh, uh, welfare, so societal welfare. 10% uh, of uh, the workforce volunteers for these organizations. 10% of the 300 million people, they contribute their time and energy um, in working for these 1.6 organizations. So as to grants, that's one way of achieving, uh, you know, the goal uh, as a, the, the goal as a society uh, as the the goal the society of Tigray has. Like if you want to see them, if, if you want to see Tigray developed, advanced, then then NGOs can also get 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 us there. I believe because when we deal with the problems that we have, we face as a society, um, uh, they can facilitate uh, the existing development goals we have as a country. Thanks so much. Great, uh, it was uh, great to have you, Asafa. But yes, uh, I must say that uh, there is a word in Tigray, actually in Tigrinya, uh, which literally means uh, getting organized. So uh, that's uh, in the, political DNA, social DNA of Tigray. So get involved in TDRA for other organizations and contribute. Get also the experience of uh, volunteering and uh, uh, working with, in a team of helping others, giving back to the community that's nurtured yep. us yep. Uh, so on. And there is also a, a clubhouse event uh umd media is happy to collaborate on that with tdrf so uh, look for the uh, social media contacts that we showed you earlier there will be announcement they're coming on the same day and uh, november the 13th asafa bai uh, what do good bari it was great to have you here thanks so much Gidacho. Uh, i'm sure we will we'll come back at you i'm, I'm sure you there's a lot of expertise that you could also help us as we embark on our, you know, strategizing our, our system. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good Thanks one. Thanks so much. Before I sign off, um, I need to make this announcement. Loma Anti, Sa'at Dushta, Eastern Time, Vinda Gabrihewat, Ms. Professor Daud Siraj, and Hitkel Lonayu. Kayam uh, Litakum, live Kanatina, Professor Daud Siraj, Gasha, and the Gabrahot, you and the Gabrahot, the Nagaras Gabrahot by Kadan. Got me meeting Kilton Ahmet, the Arafa, how now would Salasa Celeste Ahmet Koinu, Nai Hekimna Mori Nero, Koinu Ganaz, Villet Olu, the Mangista Mehdara, Nab the Masasolu, Ami Amot Hasavat, as one is an Maul at the Terrafa, as one's deck of the Hermitic Tamas, the deck of Hasazel Alayu, Buz Samanayo, Medavena, Program Nayu, Abnagarehot, Professor Dow Siraj, Live Gashayu, Kayam Dokums, Ashidista PM, it's time time romantic. That was the show for today. Have a good one.